Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I have another vintage quilt block for you. This one is called Jackson Star and I've made this in, let me back up here, <laughs> I made this one in a 16 inch size so you can make it in an 8 inch size also if you want to, it just will be smaller. So uh, this is my sample block and um, this one has a lot of pieces in it and it takes some time to do but I think it turns out really well so um, we're going to do um, flying geese units and square and a square unit so they're units that if you've been following along um, I've done those quite a bit so if you have been doing those then I think you can do this block so I hope you will join me and I'll show you how to put this block together Okay, for this block, I'm going to make it in blue and green instead of uh, pink and green, um, just to kind of see how that one will look. And um, so here are the fabrics that you need. For number A, you need four pieces that are two and a half by four and a half. For B, you need 28 two and a half inch squares, and we're going to use 24 of them for the flying geese unit. So if you like to do the method where you draw a diagonal line on the back side, you need to do that on 24 of them. For PC, we need five four and a half inch squares. For D, we need 12 two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. And for E, we need four two and a half inch squares. And for F, we need 12 two and a half inch squares. So we're gonna for another one of these, uh, if you like, you can draw a diagonal line on the back side of four of these. But I'm going to use um, a diagonal seam line on my sewing machine, which is basically just a piece of tape, and uh, do it that way so that I don't have to spend time drawing diagonal lines. So anyway, first thing we're going to do is make the square and a square unit. So I need to take four of the C units. and get those out and I'm going to need some B squares and some F squares. So let's go to the sewing machine and we'll get started on this project. Okay now on these square and a square units they're made out with two different colors and we're going to put the two colors adjacent to, to each other or matching colors adjacent to each other. So when I make a square and a square unit, what I usually will do is do opposite corners here. So I'm going to use um, a B square on one and an F square on the other. So I'm going to start with the B squares and I'm going to go ahead and chain pieces together to save time. And I'm using uh, a tape here that I've placed on. It's glow line tape and I'm going to follow that instead of drawing a line. So I'm going to start here at the point. I have this point down on this edge of the tape and then I'm just going to sew right on through. Okay, and I'm just going to do that to all four pieces. Now there are other ways to make these square and a square units and um, there's foundation paper you can use. You can draw the diagonal line on the back of the small squares and you can use this method. ahead and cut these apart to make life easier for me and now I'm going to take some of the F squares which I'm going to start out. You'll use a total of eight of the F squares and I'm going to sew them to the opposite corner of this one so it'll go up here. Thank you. 
And let me see, I'm gonna do it this way. them apart. There we go. Okay. I'm going to switch scissors here. And then the next thing I need to do is to cut off the outer corner, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to do that on both triangles. So then I have this. Now for the color combinations, you can use whatever you want. Um, I just thought I'd try a different color this time around from my sample. Since this will be going into a sampler block and that'll give me something to choose from. And I can decide which one's going to work best. Okay, so I've got those done, and now I'm going to press these open so that I will have this shape. So I'm going to press towards the triangles. So now um, I have these, and now I'm going to do the other two corners. Okay, so I'm going to start with the blue again, and I'm just going to put it in one of the corners. It doesn't really matter which one, but what I'm wanting to do is have two blues together and then two greens together. So let's do all the blues first. The unit that we have. So this is the square and a square unit. So I'm going to set them aside and next thing we're going to do is work on the flying geese units. So for that I need the D rectangles and then I need the B squares and we're going to make eight flying geese units. Okay, so I'm going to take one of the rectangles and then I'm going to place one of the squares in the corner. And once I get that all lined up, I'm going to stitch from the center to the lower left hand corner. So I'm going to get this all lined up with the raw edges even. And then we're going to sew this.
So now I need to trim off this outer triangle, this outer corner, and um, then I'll press that back and I'll have that. So I'm going to do that with all of the pieces. So now I just need to sew the other side on. So I'm going to take the next square, place those on, and sew the same way. So now we have we have eight flying geese units. Set them aside. And now we're going to make the center of the stars. And that is going to require the A rectangles. That will be the rest of the B rectangles. There should be four. And then it will take the other four F rectangles. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start with the two squares. <laughs> Yeah, these are squares, not rectangles. So we've got the B squares and the F squares, and then these are the A rectangles. Now we're going to put the, the squares together, so we're just going to sew those into pairs. And at this point, it doesn't matter. You know, there's no order to them. They can only go one direction, but just so the quarter inch seam al allowance is always. But when we sew those to the A rectangle, it will matter which way we place them. So I'll show you that when we get to that point. And here's the last one. and press. And I'm going to press towards the blue fabric since it is darker. Okay, we're going to make four units and for two of them we're going to have the blue on the left and for two of them we're going to have the blue on the right. So I'm going to start out with um, two blues on the left and then I'll do two blues on the right. So we'll just start with this and I'm going to lay this face down so that this seam is not going up against the feed dogs. It'll be running right along with the feed dogs. So I'm going to sew it this direction. For the next two, I need the blue on the right, so it needs to go this way. So this one I can sew with the pieced, the pieced section on the top. like this, which are these two, and then I have, then I have two like that. So there's that one and that one. So now I'm going to press and I'm going to press towards the rectangle. Okay, so now we're going to lay the block out and as you can see in this diagram there's a lot of pieces. So um, I gave myself some extra room here and this block can go together in rows so we're going to start with an E square and 
we have E's, we have D's, we have flying geese units, and we have square and square units, and then we have these center units. So we're going to start with, let's see, okay, here is an E square, here is a flying geese unit, use the D rectangle, another flying geese unit, and another E square. So this is the first row. So let's move this up. I'm going to move it up and yet still have it in frame. This is so big, I don't know if I can get it all in frame. Um, then another flying geese unit that will go in the next row. And then we use the center star unit and a square and a square unit and we're going to match the greens up and then we'll use another center we're matching the greens and the blues and then another flying geese unit that goes right there now we're getting to the center part so this will have a D rectangle a square and a square unit and for this one, we're going to match the colors, green to green, blue to blue. And then we have our center C square goes here. It's just the background fabric. Oh, this is not correct. We need this one. Okay. These two are mirror imaged. So we need that. Now we need a square and a square unit, and we're going to match up the colors. And then another D rectangle. So double check as you're going so that you don't um, sew pieces in, cor in incorrectly. You want them correct. Okay, I need this unit. And what I'm looking at is where the rectangle lies. The way I designed this block is I put the rectangle on the outside and like the top and the bottom. Um, it doesn't really matter so much. It's just how you want how you want to put it together. Okay, a square and a square. The other center and a flying geese unit. That goes this way. Okay. And then the last row is the same as the first row. It's just in reverse. And um, I can't get that in the frame here. But let me see if I can scoot things up a little bit. So at least they won't fall off the table. Okay. So now I'm going to sew everything into rows and then I will sew the rows together. And for this block, with there being so many pieces, I want to chain piece so that everything is um, connected. So I'm going to sew this seam down here. So I'm going to sew these, these pieces to these pieces. And then I'll sew these pieces to these and then I'll add that and then I can sew them all together and then sew the rows together. So let me adjust the camera and we'll get started sewing. Okay now there will be points to match up to seams um, in this block. Um, like right here We've got the point of the flying geese needs to match up with this seam here. Um, now this won't be real noticeable because that seam there has um, two of the same color fabrics together. But you still still want those to match as best as you can get them to match. So I'm just going to poke a hole through poke a pin through 
that point and then it comes out at that seam right there. And then I'll just pin it. And I am still fighting the heat here and the air conditioner so I'm, I'm hurrying to try and get this done before the AC kicks on again. And I've been lucky it's been off this long. Okay, now on these two pieces, I don't have to match a seam, but I don't want to blunt off the point. So I'm going to sew with the point up facing me so that I can see where the lines of stitching cross. Here's another one where I need to match the point with the seam. Long. Now I'm going to sew the next two pieces together in each row. Now, okay, so I've got one row after the other, and they all have to be pressed. So let's clip them apart and press, and then we'll sew them, sew the rows together. Okay, now I'm ready to sew everything into rows. And so I'm gonna lay them back out and make sure I've got everything facing the right direction. And let me swing this around like that. There we go. Okay. And that way you can see most of it in the... So there's the top. Making sure I've got all my greens together coming in into the center here. Okay, so now I'm ready to sew the rows together. So flip over, match seams and points, and uh, get the block done. Okay, so I'm going to do some pinning for these rows.
and I'm going to nest the seams together. And I don't have any points right there to worry about that I have to match to anything anyway. Okay, let's see what we have here. And Oh, good. Okay, so now we can press. There is the Jackson Star Block. Now I like this color combination really well. And here is my sample block with the pink and green and the blue and green. So you can see you can use all different colors, whatever you want. Okay, so that is it for the Jackson Star Block. And uh, I made mine in a 16 inch for um, the layout I have in mind for all of these vintage blocks. And I will show you that layout next week. I do need to make, um, I think, three more 16 inch blocks to have enough for the whole layout. So it will use um, 12 inch and 16 inch blocks to do it. And I'll show you what that layout looks like. And I'll have a PDF on my blog for you to download so you can use that if you want. And the pattern for the Jackson Star is also on my blog and there is a link in the description box below where you can go and get that. And that's a free block. So all of these patterns in this, this vintage quilt block series, they're all free. All you have to do is click on that link and it'll take you to the page that has the download. So you can just download the PDF and print it out off and use it whenever you have the time. So I hope you enjoy. So thank you for watching this video and if you like that please click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my latest projects click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.